the first time that I'm conscious of knowing that it was Bach and heard one of his pieces was the cantata Ich habe genug. And in my parents' basement, we had a record player. And as a kid, I would just put records on, and there it was. And I said, this is the most beautiful thing I've heard. So I think that's my first cognitive memory of hearing Bach. I think almost everyone who does Bach has a personal relationship, believes that there's a personal relationship, views it as a personal relationship. I, you know, it's, it's fun to come to Bach and say, well, why did he write this? Why did he say it this way? And you start to study, and there are pneumological things, there are whimsical things, there are things which are Baroque, which is just to turn everything upside down. Um, and you know, there's a reason why so much of the language is, is dialogue, it's, it's conversation. Um, and music is often conversation. It's, it's expressing a thought, expressing a viewpoint. Bach can have many, many different expressions, and somehow they all work. Some people listen to a lot of recordings before doing a performance. Um, I don't uh, because, because for better or for worse, I want it to reflect what my and our uh, communal take on the music is, which means you have to take the risk of doing something that might offend someone else. And so with Bach, cantatas, you must also study the text. You have to know what Bach is saying. Um, and then I think then it all comes together. The other thing is too, can we take it from the top and have just a slightly more, a slightly less uh, feeling of pushing, just a slight kind of rather joyful and a little bit lighter on that. So let's just start once more and then we're just going to jump to the next section. Here we go, at the top. When good musicians get together, they feed each other. They, 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 we build each other up, and that's that's what this is about. I'm, you know, thrilled with the choir, thrilled with the players, um, and we get together, and everybody wants to do great stuff. Since music is all around us in everyday life, we hear it, we see it, we live it, basically, and um, Bach's music has survived so many times and centuries and changes and and it still captivates us performers and audience as well it can be most intimate and at the same time um, most um, grand and noble for the heart and for the mind as well The Bach Society of Houston is a wonderfully fortunate thing for Houston to have and to have it so close to Rice where the wonderful students there can attend the concerts and the faculty as well. And um, the players, as you could hear, are outstanding and they play everywhere in the country and abroad. And Rick has really deep experience with Bach and knows what to do and also is liberating to the people who play with him and sing with him in the way that he conducts and in the way that he leads. He's with you as opposed to above you. And uh, the music is done the way um, it had to be done during its time, which is conducted or led from the keyboard and from the violin. So it was a very joyful experience. Bach Society Houston is organized around performance and sharing Bach. Uh, to the community and we do it in a number of ways. We do historic uh, Vespers events that are uh, the way Bach did it which is to have his cantatas and other music heard in the setting of, of, of a liturgy, of worship service. We have concerts that uh, embrace a wide variety of his, of his works. Uh, we have a chamber series that, that 
features sometimes solo performers, sometimes small ensembles doing not only Bach, but things that relate to Bach in some way. Uh, and we have organ concerts on this beautiful organ um, that we have here that we are treasure so much. Um, and so those are some ways in which we manifest the music of Bach and share it. It can be intimidating, um, you know, to work with just a sea of fantastic musicians, um, but then you have to let go of that um, and not worry about that. And we're all aware of our own of our own faults, you know, make mistakes, do 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 something wrong. We all do, so you just let go of that and you just revel in in the opportunity to to work with colleagues of such a fantastic caliber. <laughs> Music is so different when there are ears who are listening. It's a great feeling because you connect um, and you connect with an audience in a, in a particular way. And, and, and it's always fascinating. You can feel, you can feel a room. You can feel what the, what the response in a room is. If it's, if it's, yeah, this is really cool. You can feel if, if, if it's not a good you know, take uh, over the years. Let's face it, we all have sometimes not so good days and sometimes great days. And you just take it for what it is. Bach is huge for me. I've been singing Bach um, pretty much since I was a college student studying music. And for me, particularly because my voice is an alto voice, contralto voice, mezzo, I found Bach really satisfied me the way Mozart satisfies most other singers, young singers, young opera singers. Mozart has a high tessitura and Bach is more fitted to my voice. So I began singing Bach, and Bach, in a way, led me to the career path that I've had, which has been, as I said, largely in 18th century music. How did I feel in the concert? What was my what was my response? Um, I I loved it. Uh, it was it was a good concert. It was a good night. A um, couple things I'd like to fix, of course. Uh, and and you know the director is always guilty. You know the, the buck stops right there. <laughs> but uh, but overall, it, it it it's a great feeling. I think Bach has a great life in Texas and has already had a great life in Texas and will continue to do so. And everybody, come hear Bach in Texas. We have a lot of fun. And we'll see if we can get Bach at the rodeo at some point. <laughs>